Praise the Lord. I want to just encourage us today. How many kindness I have drawn you. Do you know that God is drawing every day? You know, God is calling every day. But the way we respond to his love and kindness is a reflection of the state of our heart. And that's why even though you've received a new one, the maintenance is on you. The keeping of the heart is on you. The Bible says, that's why, listen, the... There are many things that we consecrate unto God, but the best one is a consecrated heart. Amen. That's what God says. It's a little consecrated heart. He says, I will take away your uncircumcised hearts. Amen. I will give you new hearts. And so I want to encourage us today. Listen, it matters the state of your heart. And you have to know how to be examining where am I at. Because some things appear right away. And some things take time to appear. And if you want to be responding to this loving kindness, the way God is drawing. Because sometimes, you know, I've heard people in the past say, you know, I'll come to church and, and I don't feel God anymore. And it's not moving me like it used to move me. And the first thing I'd ask you is really what you have been learning today is one, are you distracted? And two, where's your heart at? Where's your mind? Where's your heart? Because the Bible says, I will never leave them nor forsake them. So the issue is not, is God there? The issue is, is are you there? Hmm. Because sometimes we're there and we're not there. You know what I'm saying? You are there, but your heart is not there. Elisha told his servant, he said, did not my heart go with you? Did not my heart go with you? So the state of your heart matters. I just want to encourage us today. God is drawing with his loving kindness. Your response is going to be dictated by the state of your heart. It's going to be dictated by the state of your heart. So I want to give you guys some tips really, 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 really quickly. Number one, we love this scripture, Proverbs 4.23. Just pull it up really quickly for me. And the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence. So that means that God gives you a new heart. And then he says the responsibility of maintenance is on you. God gives you a new heart. And he says the responsibility to maintain that heart. How many of you wanted to go swimming in that pool? <laughs> you wanted to go swimming in an algae-filled pool, Jashon? <laughs> Nobody wants to go swimming in a pool that's green. Nobody wants to go swimming in a pool that's green. Why? So you have to understand that your ability to relate to God depends on what is the state of my heart right now. It's okay. It's okay. What is the state of my heart right now? Listen, I just want to encourage us. You must be, listen, there are some things you must be diligent about. You must be diligent about your money. You must be diligent about your your word life, you must be diligent about the state of your children. But the most important thing to be diligent about is the state of your heart. Because out of it flows some things. What you call oftentimes a life issue began as a heart issue. What began as a destiny issue, a relational issue, started as a heart issue. Do you know, listen, how many of you know attraction is instantaneous, but love is grown? Love is built. You look at someone and say, wow. I know when Ernest saw Lori, he was like, wow. And he was drawn. He was attracted. There was an attraction. But now what will make you strong is the ability to develop and cultivate the love, that spark. If I can put it like this, think of it in, in a relational term. Think of attraction draws people. There's a spark that lights the flame of love. Okay? God attracts us. God draws us with his loving kindness to spark something in you to respond to him. And you have a responsibility to cultivate it, but the love of God can only be cultivated in the heart. And what that means is that it either grows in the heart or dies in the heart. Or let me, let, let me say choked in the heart. The love of God can't die. Amen? Let me, re, let me rephrase that. Is it can be choked up. Listen, how many of you, uh, let me talk to the ladies for a second. Have you ever, you know, been living on your own and your drains work fine and all of a sudden... Now you have a man and he, and he shaves and all of a sudden the drains are getting clogged every couple of months. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The ladies are all laughing. It's like, yep. <laughs> Do you know why that happens? It, it's because over time, 
the garbage, the refuse of life is piling up in the drain. And if you are not releasing something into the drain to purge it, it can be clogged and there's a backup. And some believers' hearts, they're backed up Why? they're choked up. They're filled with some things that are making it so hard for love to flow in them. This is why you must do maintenance on your heart. I'm going to give you some scriptures really quickly. I'm going to round up in two minutes. Really, really quickly. Hmm. Uh, number one, let's just go to, I, I, we didn't even go to Proverbs 4.23. Let's read that quickly. Really quick, Proverbs 4.23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep, guard, diligence, watchfulness. You can't keep your heart without diligence. Or let me put it like this, this is why you need to be there at 10. You can't keep your heart without discipline. Because diligence and discipline go hand in hand. There is no diligent person that is indisciplined. And so... It takes a concentrated effort to maintain your heart. Because there are things every day that are going to come to disturb your heart. And some things are very big. And some things are small and grow. Uh, go to Luke. No, go to yeah, Luke 8.14. Luke 8.14 and then Matthew 13. Let me show you really, really quickly. And that, so how many of you know the parable of, uh, of the seed and the different kinds of fields and ground? How many of you know that the seed is the word and the ground is a heart? So you are seeing four types of hearts. And look at this, the third type of heart is this, and that which fell among thorns. That which, so there are something, there's something called thorny heart. Thorny heart, a heart that is being choked. It says, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares, with riches and pleasures of this life. And look at this, bring no fruit to perfection. Wow. You want your relationship with the Father. You want a deeper level of love, a deeper level of intimacy. You, you know, um, some of you know who T.B. Joshua is and he's gone to be with the Lord. But I remember him sharing one time, he's like, he's like he would sit down with the Lord, like, before the soccer game, or sorry, football, sorry, sorry, <laughs> football game would start, and the Lord would show him the game, like an entire, like, two, three-hour game would go through and show him the game, and show him who's going to score, and when they're going to score, and how they'd score, and then he would go and re-watch it when it's actually happening, and everything would happen according to what, I mean, who doesn't want a deep relationship like that? Where you're just sitting down and the Lord is just showing you some things because of deep fellowship. That is heart-to-heart -heart connection. Relationship can't go deep when the heart's not involved. And so if you want that, I want to encourage you. You can't afford to let your heart be overgrown with some things. You know what I'm talking about there? Worries, cares. I want this. I want things to be better. I want it to look like this. I want it to look like that. They're, they're the worry and the fear. Jesus told Martha, he's like, Martha, you are worried about many things. And because of worry, she was missing relationship. Because of worry, she was missing on receiving some love of God. And I want to encourage you today. There were, there were a few steps that I wanted to give you. I want to give you, I just want to give you this one step. Go to John 14, 27. How many of you know that one of the tools for guarding your heart is the peace of God? It says, and the peace of God shall guard your heart. Amen? Philippians 4, verse 7. I just want, there's a few things I wanted to give you today, but you have to purge your heart. You do that in prayer. You do that by the word. You have to examine your heart. The Bible says examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. So part of guarding is you're examining every day. Is, was something taking root? So You know sometimes you talk to someone, they're like, that didn't bother me, and, but you can tell like 100% it bothered them. And then like three days later, it's still bothering them. Something entered in and they're not examining what's going on. Always be cognizant. Always be aware of why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Because every feeling has a reason. Every feeling has a reason. Every feeling has a root. You don't just feel. 
Emotions are a response to something. So you don't just feel for the sake of feeling. What scripture did I give? John 14, 27. I want to give, give you this tip, and let's rise up to our feet. We can read this together. Before we read this scripture, if you don't yet know Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity to receive him into your life because he is our peace. He's the one that changes our heart, and he died. He wants a strong relationship with us and to know that love. And so if you don't know Jesus today or you want to commit your life afresh to him, just say this prayer after me, Jesus Thank you for dying for me. I believe you died, you are buried, and you rose again for me. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love, for your great mercy. I receive your love. I reject love of the world, love of the devil, love of sin, love of sin. I reject it. Thank you for the victory I have in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, we want to hear from you. If it's online, send a message to us on Facebook or whatever platform you are watching us on. Send a message. And if you're in the sanctuary, come and see us after the service. We want to work with you. But now we're going to read John 14, 27. I wanted you to pray that prayer because today I want Jesus to speak peace into your heart. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's, let's read this together. John 14, 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now listen to this, listen to this. Mark 4, 39, when there was a storm, what did Jesus do? When there was a, st a storm in Mark 4, 39, what did Jesus do? He spoke peace into the storm. And so my prayer for you today, my prayer for you today is that you will begin to hear that Jesus is going to speak peace into your heart right now. Peace into your heart right now. Wherever there is a storm of emotions, wherever there is a storm of hurt, wherever there is a storm that is choked up love, storm of worry, storm of fear, storm of anxiety, whatever that storm has been upon your heart today, just lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Lord, 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 Lord. speak peace, speak peace. Speak peace. 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 peace into my heart peace, peace, into, peace my into my heart peace into in my the heart. name of Jesus just talk to the Jesus. Lord right now whatever storm whatever storm the Bible says let not your heart be troubled let not your heart be troubled whatever has been choking up love the Bible says where there's perfect love it casts out fear so right now right now let the peace of God peace Peace of God, peace of God, peace of God, peace of God over your heart, peace of God. I speak peace in your heart, peace in your heart, peace in your heart, peace in your heart. Let the love of God, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Whatever choke, whatever is choking, whatever is choking, the flow of love right now. Listen, Elijah in fear ran to the cave, but David in fear strengthened himself in the Lord. Asaph was almost overtaken, but he entered the house of the Lord and saw the end of the wicked. Whatever has made you envious of the wicked, whatever has been stealing your heart, as you have entered the house, as you have entered the sanctuary of God, let your eyes God right now. Thank you, Lord. And if you need healing in your body, just touch that part right now. And by the love of God, 
by the love of God that sent Jesus for you. I say be healed right now. Amen. I say be healed right now. Amen. Receive healing right now in Amen. the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever that lump is, by the love of God, I command it to shrivel up and be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any lump in your eye, any lump in your body, by the love of God, shrivel up, be destroyed in Jesus. 